during the Sonne Expedition 268. We we're investigating the baseline for the ecosystem analysis, uh, particularly manganese nodule habitats. This information is necessary to assess uh, future potential mining and also uh, test of equipment. Uh, that will be done in the next few years uh, against this baseline, so we get an idea of uh, the impact of uh, the mining operations. The primary goal of our project is to formulate suggestions uh, for international regulations based on the scientific knowledge that we generate and in particular for the mining code of the International Seabed Authority. This is unique because it is actually the first time that humanity is looking into the environmental impacts of its actions at the same time or even before it is starting to exploit the resource. moment our knowledge about the deep sea connectivity of species so we know species exist uh, across the Pacific the same species but we don't really know uh, over which time scales they have this genetic exchange uh, we don't for most of the species we don't really know how fast they grow and how long they live um, we have little information on what uh, tolerance they have to to changes in the environment because even the changes in the deep sea uh, time series wise there is almost no information available um, and that, that's one of the tricky things that we try to answer uh, with our experiments and situ experiments that we do in the seafloor and going there over several years um, because the impacts could be larger than just the mining area. We have uh, all important uh, disciplines and experts on board to study the environmental impacts, starting with oceanography to measure bottom currents, resuspension of particles. We have a big array um, of sensors to um, investigate and measure and quantify the turbidity of sediment plumes when they are suspended during mining operations. We have um, biologists here um, for each faunal species and size classes, uh, different experts uh, so that we can cover the range from small animals, myofauna, to bigger ones like holothurians that are half a meter to a meter large, which are called megafauna. Um, then we have microbiologists here because microbes are the, the key component in the ecosystem producing nutrient fluxes from organic matter that they degrade in the sediment. And we have geochemists uh, who look at these processes also on longer time scales of several thousands to even a hundred thousands, maybe a million years in the upper few meters of the sediment. Um, and then we have geologists. Uh, looking at the, the bathymetry and the different sediment composition uh, so that we get a larger picture um, of these point measurements that we typically do into the area by analyzing the geological features. <music> Basically every day we find something new, new species in all size classes, uh, different environmental conditions, um, they are very variable. So the deep sea is anything but a plane um, and this heterogeneity we need to figure out and better understand the processes of carbon cycling, uh, how the deep sea ecosystem works, what it, its functions are. and. Uh, in the end, as a coordinator of the project, uh, what I like most about this job is actually putting together the information from all the different disciplines um, and uh, come up with the holistic picture. And um, in this project, which is more applied 
the nice thing is uh, that, that this helps um, the international community and regulators uh, to be informed about the, the facts and we can make suggestions uh, for, uh, for regulations to mitigate impacts from mining operations. Deep sea research, uh, as we do it today, is um, technically really challenging because uh, the deep sea, uh, with high water pressures, 400 times the atmosphere, cold temperatures close to zero degree, um, is, t is for the technology that we use and, and the gear very challenging, particularly when we depend on electronics. Um, and uh, so it's um, anything else but a routine job to deploy these, these equ this equipment. Um, and you always have to live with uh, bigger and smaller problems and even failures. Most of the technology we're actually deploying is not an industry standard yet, so we're really at the forefront of developing this deep sea technology and um, that brings a lot of challenges during such a cruise.